Welcome back to another episode of my trading vlog where 80% of my views come from returning subscribers. If that's you, hit the thumbs up. If not, consider subscribing. I'm going to talk about SPX updating this account. It's very complicated. There's a few things here that I want to explain. I'll walk through it a little bit. At the end of the day, sometimes all you need to do is look at the larger degrees, the higher wave degrees of Elliott, and not really worry about the smaller waves. You can do that. It's okay. It's all about relative direction and mode. Right now, I think what we're looking at is pretty clearly a dump, and it's coming soon. I was a little less bearish the last couple of weeks. We had a downtrend break and a bounce, and having seen this play out a little bit, I'm still feeling like the market is really in between a rock and a hard place. Very indecisive. I can still see an inverted head and shoulder through here. A catalyst event is going to send us one way or the other, and honestly, I'm not super optimistic. I'm, I'm I'm not. I'm thinking that we need to finish the super cycle correction wave four, and it should be a sharp correction, so a zigzag. That would take us down to about 3,200 if we get the wave proportionality that tends to occur throughout wave four. However, if we get a full measured move down, and I measured that from the peak right at, right, right at 2022, 20, 2021, January, th and I extended it to the low, pulled the extension tool up to the last high, and when I did that, the low that we target is going to be 2961. Yikes! That is very low. That's a scary low, but that would just be a typical zigzag sharp correction for wave 4. And with the tendency to beat towards 3200, it makes a lot of sense. Something else that supports this analysis are these dashed trend lines. This is the grand super cycle channel. And I have this divided into quarters. This level is at the 75%. I believe this next one is going to be at 50. Yep. You can see that the peak here found the top of that white channel and these dashed lines are longer. And then these inner quartered percentage channel lines are smaller dashes. And you can find that it was a point of critical support back in June of 2022, that the price bottomed below there in October of 2022, bounced there again in December of 2022, and just recently found support near there March 10th, just a couple of weeks ago. And so this level of support, this interior trend line, is giving us this inverted head and shoulder look where that low in October of 2022 would be the head, and those other touch points I mentioned give us our shoulders. And it could play out that way. This could reverse and head higher. It really could. But it would take a miracle. It would take a massive catalyst event, something incredibly positive. Something else to notice is this channel I have shown in red. The price having touched there in February and been pushed down at that point. And so that channel, you can see, it leads us into about that tendency target for wave four in the latter half of this year. So if we're expecting a recession this year, towards the end of this year, this would be a great place to see the bottom form and then the recession play out. Typically, I don't think the recessions and the bottoms line up one to one. Uh, don't really know which one comes first, but I can tell you one thing. When we enter the recession, it's going to be panic mode 101. It does not surprise me at all that we're worried about the influence of TikTok and what it can do in society. We've seen the results. We've seen the political meddling of Facebook. We know it's real. And if the stock market makes another 50% correction, like it typically does, people are going to lose it. They're going to go crazy. And the threat isn't actually the failing financial system. Because guess what? The financial system is completely arbitrary. They could fix it in a minute. They could issue a new dollar, whatever it would take. It's not a normal. It's fine. The, what's not good is when people lose faith. That is the real enemy here is the response by the public. Will fear grip us or will we pull through with faith? And it, that's all it is. It's a matter of public opinion. The real threat is fear itself. Fight the fear. Don't take the bait. They're selling you fear. That is the media is selling you fear. There are lawsuits about this, and we've seen this these tactics used by unscrupulous politicians. It's got to stop. Keep your head on straight. It's going to be okay. 
It's gonna be okay. Just remember that. I personally am buying gold. <laughs> I've been waiting for a rally in gold for a long time, so I'm welcoming this. This is great. Yeah, let's flush out the extra cash and the equities. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Excess, greed, overvaluations, jeez, wave five stuff. It's time to bring down cycle wave five and bring in super cycle corrective wave four and then we'll start super cycle wave five, which I personally think is going to be like a renaissance in mankind's history. It'll be beautiful, but we've got to go through this painful process first and not completely go crazy. <laughs> anyway, I'll get off my soapbox. Um, but yeah, these targets are really low. There's an uptrending support through here that's formed from the 2009 low and the 2020 low. I believe coming into there for the end of the first zigzag that's going to form to get us down to this level is a pretty good place. Find some support, probably bounce through there. I know that this was seen as a buying opportunity back here and Yahoo Finance, CNBC, you name whatever big media corporation. There was a lot of headlines. Retail traders can't miss this one opportunity. This is a once in a lifetime event. They're going to be able to enter into new positions and they're going to be soaring in a few years. But you know what? That's typically how the first dip in, in a sharp corrective cycle is viewed. When I look at, when I read this book by Frost and Pretcher, The Elliott Wave Principle, that's the mentality that accompanies the first dip. Okay, then we get this exuberant, sharp, excited bounce. And it wasn't like very excited. I mean, it's a pretty strong rally. Um, it's not nearly as pronounced as this first bounce. Like this is a sharp corrective rally with a sharp motive wave heading lower after it. But right away we found a, a bottom there after setting a nominal new low. And so I'm thinking this might be some sort of form of alter alternation probably where our B waves, one is much sharper than the other. One's just like a three, three, five of like, whoo, euphoria. And this was kind of like a lethargic grind higher. And now we're starting to see a new trend appear that's pretty quick. And I believe that what will reach these lower targets much faster than people are comfortable with. And that's what's going to drive that fear is the speed with which we're going to reach these levels. We can zoom in into the hourly time frame for just a minute here. It looks like I'm having some sort of broadening pattern through here. Of course, it does look motive, so it's probably some sort of reverse triangle. And waves one and waves four here overlap. So it's possible that this is a reverse leading, or yes, a reverse leading diagonal triangle in wave position A pointing down. And we're going to find ourselves in a dump here shortly, leading us down to 3678. And again, there's going to be some resistance towards this trend line that's formed by the grand super cycle. But bullish reversal occurs just above there at 385.5. So watch those levels very closely. It's going to be very grindy in SPY. It's going to be very grindy in SPY. I'm not even going to trade SPY until we get this bearish reversal confirmation on SPX. Because it, the price really could grind through here for a while. We could get a triangle through here. We get a rectangle through here. This is like purgatory. Until we get above 41.79 or below 38.55, SPX is standing in a very neutral position. And there is still a potential bottoming pattern here on the charts in the longer time frame. So I'll be keeping a close eye on, I think, the news. I think the news is probably going to drive this right now. The markets are ready to capitulate, I believe. I think that's what this tells us, is we've had a lot of mixed news. Yeah, bank failings, but hey, there's a plan for that. Taking care of that, no big deal. I think when there's the event that we can't control, I think that's what's really going to cause the most pain. And so that's where I'm at with SPX right now. That's where I'm at. I think I did a good job not being too bearish once we started uh, turning down again. This has been pretty sideways, pretty choppy. It's very hard to look at um, on a daily basis because of how grindy the price is. If you consider that we haven't really set a significant new low since June of last year or a significant new high since August of last year, yeah, this has been an absolute pain, right? But I think that the Federal Reserve is going to continue to raise rates and the banking system is going to get crushed. <laughs> Again, for much of the same reasons that happened in 2008. So, anyway. 
That's what I have for SPX. I am going to be flipping bearish here very soon, I think, but not until we get below 3855. And I'm really not going to be all that bullish until we get above 4179. And that's a big range. I know that's a big range. But honestly, I don't want to be calling bullish or bearish when the price could be grinding sideways for, a, for, for, for an extended period. Because it could. Just just bear in mind, okay? This, this B wave, the super cycle wave B, this could be growing. And it could be that this three wave pattern is only the first touch point in like a huge pattern, right? We get some sort of big reverse triangle through here or like some huge diagonal, but uh, it's just not as likely. But okay, this is getting too long. I'm out of here.